Glenn, uh, you, I think you happen to know very well David Rockefeller. I would like you to describe how he was as a collector, his relation to art. David was a remarkable man. He had incredible passion for the visual arts, actually for anything beautiful. Uh, and he had a real collector's instinct. He really loved to track things down. I remember even in his 90s, we would go to Soho and Chelsea and even do studio visits because he was interested in contemporary art. And he was buying really up until the last years of his life. What he had was a sharp eye, a quick and sharp intelligence, and a desire to understand. And he's one of those people who understood the world through the objects he surrounded himself with. And that wasn't just beautiful paintings. It was porcelain. It was ancient Chinese art. Uh, it was textiles from the Middle East. It was anything that captivated his attention. He, he was, was curious. He was fascinated and curious by culture uh, and appreciated that you could live with objects. And by living with them, you could learn from them. But uh, what about paintings? Well, David had an incredible collection of paintings that he and his wife Peggy put together and he was lucky enough, especially in the early years, to be able to work with Alfred Barr, the founding director of the Museum of Modern Art, and in doing so to have access to the Stein collection when it came up uh, for sale, to many other great collectors from whom he was able to buy remarkable works of art, whether it was the great Cezanne's, his boy with the red vest is one of my favorite paintings, but it was one thing after another that he was able to assemble, often with the help of Alfred Barr, but really because he himself looked so carefully. What about contemporary art? David was fascinated by contemporary art. It was really incredible. We would go on studio visits, we would go to the galleries, and you would see him react to things that uh, you wouldn't believe. He bought a James Sienna drawing, uh, spur of the moment, because he thought it was so beautiful. He bought a late de Kooning painting that was just absolutely ravishing. Uh, his curiosity didn't end with early modern art. It continued. So it means there was no real direction in his collection? No, I think there was clarity in his thinking about art, but it wasn't that he limited himself to any one moment or any one artist or any one medium. Uh, his ancient Chinese material was beautiful. Uh, he developed a love of textiles, especially uh, carpets and um, other textiles from the Middle East because his great Aunt Lucy was one of the greatest collectors of textiles uh, in the world. So it was an insatiable curiosity, but I think the, 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 the thread that holds it all together is a real commitment to quality, uh, discipline. He didn't collect without thinking about it. Uh, and also, when you look back on the hundreds, maybe even thousands of works that he acquired, English furniture, for instance, uh, carpets from Morocco, uh, Cezanne, somehow they all held together. And when you would go to his house, ah. uh, there was a mise-en-scene that was absolutely beautiful. And he was in charge of the mise-en-scene? Totally in charge of the mise-en-scene. Mm -hmm. He's not somebody who had an advisor who simply put the collection together for him. He, he, he wasn't a collector in that way. He, he may have sought people's advice and may have been fortunate enough to work with people like Alfred Barr, but the decisions were his.